and Julia Sondu, showing you where development is happening. Please come and join us. The Sahara Desert continues to be a threat due to land management overgrazing and droughts in the region. It's fast becoming completely desertified land causing many problems such as hunger, poverty, unemployment, forced migration, conflict, as well as an increased risk of extreme weather events. However, the country Niger in the African Sahara region has been making some astonishing agricultural developments. Turning large areas suffering from desertification into agricultural fields. In Niger, 5 million hectares of land with over 200 million trees have been restored with 2.5 million people benefiting from the improved use of land. This transformation can be called a major accomplishment for any country especially when a country only receives an average of 6.5 inches of rain. We're going to tell you how and why Niger is turning its deserts into huge farmlands, so stick with us and let's dive into today's video. Niger, which is officially a republic, is a landlocked country in West Africa named after the Niger River. Over 80% of its land area lies in the Sahara Desert. Those trying to grow crops in the Sahel region are often faced with poor soil, erratic rainfall and long periods of drought. Farmers faced significant tree losses in the 1970s and 80s as a result of drought, the expansion of cropland and human pressure because few trees remained on the fields farmers often witnessed the newly planted crops being destroyed. Restoring degraded land back to productive is a huge opportunity for Africa. It brings big social and economic benefits to rural farming communities. It helps combat climate change and brings technology to enhance traditional knowledge. One of the main regenerative initiatives which is restoring 5 million hectares of land in Niger is farm-managed natural regeneration known as FMNR. FMNR is a low-cost land restoration technique used to combat poverty and hunger amongst poor substance farmers by increasing food and timber production and resilience to climate extremes. FMNR increases the productivity and resilience of crop fields and pasture lands in the challenging growing conditions of Africa's Sahara. It is a technology that has proven amongst the most transformative of all. FMNR started in 1983 in Niger pioneered by Tony Ronaldo, an Australian agronomist who is widely known as the forest maker. Farmer Managed Natural Regeneration FMNR, is a low-cost land restoration technique used to combat poverty and hunger amongst poor farmers by increasing food and timber production and resilience to climate extremes. In practice, FMNR involves the systematic regrowth and management of trees and shrubs from felled tree stumps, sprouting root systems or seeds. The regrown trees and shrubs, which help restore soil structure and fertility, inhibit erosion and soil moisture evaporation, rehabilitate springs and the water table, and increase biodiversity. Some tree species also impart nutrients such as nitrogen into the soil. FMNR and sustainable. The FMNR method is central to the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. It provides a holistic approach and delivers on all its dimensions including economic, social and environmental. World Vision believes that the FMNR is fundamental to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, improving the lives of millions of children and their communities around the world. Adopting FMNR helps to improve healthy lives through food security, eliminates poverty, and develops communities sustainably. Many communities which have adopted FMNR are substantially benefiting from increased and more sustainable production. Australian agronomist Tony Ronaldo is turning African deserts into forests. By the side of a road in a desert in Niger, Tony Ronaldo had the eureka moment that would change not only his life but the lives of millions of people in West Africa and beyond. Mr. Ronaldo, who at the time had spent more than two years in the West African country attempting to halt the devastating creep of desertification and, failing miserably, looked around as he let air out of his tires so he could proceed on the sandy road. It was a dispiriting sight. There was barely a tree on the horizon. I thought to myself, how many millions of dollars, how many hundreds of staff would you need, how many decades would it take to have any sort of decent impact on this desolate landscape? In the early 1980s, Niger was a landscape on the point of ecological collapse, Mr. Ronaldo tells ABCRN's Soul Search. 
Farmers had cut down existing native forests decades earlier, leaving a denuded landscape sandblasted by 70 km per hour winds and ravaged by high soil surface temperatures and apocalyptic dust storms. Because there was a lack of diversity, there were no natural predators to insect pests, Mr. Ronaldo says. Even in the years when you did get rain, you'd have an explosion of locusts and caterpillars. Food and water were scarce as drought dried up the wells and devastated crop yields. It was a desperate situation, Mr. Ronaldo says, as men left the villages looking for work and food to send home to their families, leaving women and children to fend for themselves. A roadside epiphany. Gazing out at the barren terrain, Mr. Ronaldo considered giving up and leaving Africa. It was one of those low points in my life, he says. Two years into his land restoration project in Niger, Mr. Ronaldo had yet to see any success. Expensive tree planting programs failed time after time. I was feeling very discouraged because I knew full well that most people weren't interested at all, he says. In fact, they actually called me the crazy white farmer. He could see their point. Here they were, often short of food, very, very poor. And here's this crazy white guy coming in and telling them they should be planting trees on their precious farmland. On the desolate road, Mr. Ronaldo, a devout Christian, said a prayer and soon after, noticed a useless looking bush nearby. He walked over to take a closer look. In that instant, everything changed, he says. I realized, no, it's not a bush, it's not an agricultural weed, it's a tree, and it's been cut down. Nigerian farmers typically slashed the small shoots that grew from tree stumps, but Mr. Ronaldo realized in that moment these suckers offered the answer he was looking for. Everything that we needed was literally at our feet, he says. I realized then I didn't need to plant trees, we weren't fighting the Sahara Desert, I didn't need a multi-million budget, we just needed to work with nature instead of fighting it and destroying it. What is FMNR? Mr. Ronaldo is at pains to point out that growing trees from stumps, what he called farmer-managed natural regeneration, FMNR, is not new. It's a centuries-old method of cultivation practiced around the world. The key to FMNR's success is its simplicity. Mr. Ronaldo quotes permaculture founder Bill Mollison, who said, Though the problems of the world are increasingly complex, the solutions remain embarrassingly simple. I love that, Mr. Ronaldo says, who has become known as the forest maker for his work re-greening degraded land around the world. FMNR has three basic principles. First is the use of dormant tree stumps, an underground forest, to regenerate land rather than planting seeds or seedlings. The second is pruning to encourage growth and give the trees a desirable form. All we're doing in FMNR is selecting the stems we want to grow into full tree stature and culling out the excess because there might be 20 or 30 of these stems all competing for the same light and nutrients and water, Mr. Ronaldo explains. You need to reduce that competition. The third principle is community involvement. To succeed, it must be farmer managed and community-owned, not Tony-managed, says Mr. Ronaldo. The demand had to come from the farmers. However, convincing local farmers to grow trees on their farmland was no easy task. Initially, there was a lot of reluctance, he says. The forefathers of the farmers I knew were the pioneers who cleared the bush. They were the heroes who created farmland for the next generation. The idea that the farmer's forebears had made mistakes wasn't a popular one. People pushed back, Mr. Ronaldo says. Nor were people keen to break with tradition and try something new. Nobody wants to be different, particularly in a traditional society. You can face ostracism and ridicule. Mr. Ronaldo eventually locked in around 10 volunteers willing to try his seemingly harebrained scheme. After some setbacks, the concept gained supporters as people saw its benefits. The new trees provided animal fodder and extra wood for fuel, served as windbreaks, and added organic matter to the soil, improving its quality. These pioneering farmers formed the nucleus for what became this massive movement across the country, Mr. Ronaldo says. Twenty years after Mr. Ronaldo's roadside epiphany, the FMNR movement restored 5 million hectares of agroforest in Niger, 
all, without planting a single tree. This is the end of our program today. See you on Intervlog same time tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you for watching Intervlog. Thank you.